today we're going to be working on the fundamentals of ProDemand, looking up electronic repair information from a web browser. Now there's other brands out there, but one of the most common is ProDemand, which is supplied by Mitchell, and you can get a very similar version through Snap-on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our web browser. Um, I have a shortcut down here, but I'll go ahead and type it out, www.prodemand.com. Press enter. Now this page does change from time to time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for the login. Sometimes it's here in the middle, but it's typically and almost always up here. If this login page changes, you'll find a login button up at the top. If you don't already have your login credentials from your employer or your instructor, get that now. If there is already credentials in here, do not log in at this point until you verify that your username and password is correct. Because if you get the wrong uh, username and password and hit the login button more than five times, which is very common in a school base where the password changes from time to time, then it locks everybody out for at least five minutes. So verify that you have the correct one entered in here, and then you can hit remember if you need to, and then hit the login button. That is going to take us straight into the vehicle selection. Now we need to know a few things on the vehicle before proceeding. The first method would be year, make, model, engine, submodel options, and you can put the odometer in if you want. If you have the license plate number in the state, then it can uh, decode that for you or the VIN number. So however you want to do it, a lot of times in the classroom setting, we will just give you a demonstration vehicle and you don't always have the VIN number. So we're gonna to go to vehicle selection. We're gonna select the year. So we'll go down and say like a 2010 Dodge. We'll say pickup. And there's a couple engine options here. Now, sometimes if you see multiple engines of the same size, we may need to know the VIN number to properly decode that. So let me actually go back and we'll select one that does have multiple options. We'll go back to a 2003 Dodge pickup. See right here, we have a 5.9, a 5.9, and a 5.9. If I was looking for a 5.9 with a gasoline engine, and I don't have the VIN number, I may have to click in here and continue until it tells me what engine I have. So we're going to say this is a 2500. And right away, it says right up here, diesel. So that's the wrong one. So let's go back to engine and try the next one. 2,500, that one's a diesel also. Go back to engine, pick this last one. And that one automatically selected a 1,500 and it is a gasoline engine. So let me come down here. We pick whether it's four wheel drive or rear wheel drive. This one is a four wheel drive and it automatically knows that it's an automatic transmission if there was an option on that, then you could pick automatic or manual. And sometimes there's two different types of transmission. At this point, we can, before we hit use this vehicle, we can enter the odometer. So we'll say it has 120,000 miles. And we're going to hit, click that, and hit use this vehicle. So this is the first page that it's going to take us to for repair information. This is called the One Search Plus menu, and it has quite a few options that are very commonly accessed. So if you are an entry-level technician just getting into the field and you're doing oil changes, tire rotations, you're not gonna have to stray very far from this main page. So if you're doing an oil change and need to know what type and how much oil to use, we're going to click on Fluid Capacities. And this is gonna give us a fluid capacity for just about everything on the vehicle. So over here on the left, we're going to look at fluid type. We're going to go down to engine oil. It confirms what engine option we have, because sometimes there's more than one. Or there may be options like with filter, without filter, uh, on an overhaul. But most of the time, we're going to use the with filter option if it gives us options. It tells us how many quarts of oil. If you are using the metric system, it does tell you how many liters, but that's not very common in our area. So five quarts of oil and then API SAE, that'll be the type or the specification. 
and 10W30 is the viscosity or the oil weight. There is an additional note over here that says use oil that has been certified by the American Petroleum Institute. That's what API stands for. Sometimes there will be a very lengthy note over here with a specific type of oil and a spec that has to be met. So if that is the case, make sure you are using the correct oil. Okay, so now we know how much oil and what type. We can close the screen, but let's say the customer wants a tire rotation as well. We can click on tire fitment right here. And now this one has a lot of options, but we're just gonna kind of scroll down here and see if we can find the vehicle we have. Now on the drive type, I'm, I am seeing a discrepancy here. All of the left side, it says four wheel drive, but the vehicle option, some of these say rear wheel drive. So I'm not sure why there's a discrepancy there, but there is, but we know that we have a four wheel drive pickup. We don't know if it has the Laramie package, the SLT, quad cab, regular cab, but let's say it's a quad cab with the SLT. We'll go over here. It gives us the tire size, how much air to put in the tire. So 35 in the front, 35 in the rear, and how tight we need to tighten those lug nuts back on after we do the rotation. So this is all very useful information for doing a oil change and a tire rotation. So we can either close it up here or we can hit the back button. Either way, we'll end up back on this menu. Now, one more thing that we wanna be checking is what else needs to be done at that mileage if we're doing an oil change. So if you click up here where it says one search plus, it's not in this menu yet. They may add it in the future, but click on one search plus, go down to maintenance. And since we enter the mileage on the first page, it's automatically selected for us. If we did not enter the odometer or the mileage, then it's gonna start us off all the way over here. And there's a little arrow down here. Um, sometimes depending on where you're scrolled at on the page, it'll be in a different spot. But that just moves you along by one. If you wanna make a big jump, you can just click up here at the top on the end of the slider and we'll click on 120. So there are several items that it says that we need to do. We need to adjust the transmission bands, inspect the air cleaner, transmission fluid brake, hoses and lines, linings, a big old long list, replace all of this stuff. So that's all stuff that is recommended to be done at this mileage. Now, one more thing to point out is we are on the severe driving condition schedule. Here where I live in Colorado, Almost every vehicle I see, I'm going to classify that as severe driving. Um, we have extreme hot and cold temperatures. We have hills and mountains if you leave town in either direction. And if you're in town, then you have stop and go driving. But if we were on a normal vehicle driving conditions, say you're in an area that has a consistent temperature, the traffic's not bad, you have a greater than five mile commute, so the vehicle gets nice and warm, there might not be as much stuff that needs to be done at that interval, but we'll go ahead and leave it back on severe. And if we scroll down a little bit further, there are some items that are based on time. So every 60 months or five years, we are going to flush or replace the cooling system, which means the antifreeze on the vehicle needs to be exchanged. And then if we see a little tiny number up here, that means there is a note down below and it looks like if you hover over, it'll give you the note. But if you need to see them, they're down here at the bottom. Now on some vehicles, but not all vehicles, we can actually click on these and it'll give us a procedure for doing that service. So engine oil, let's click on that. It gives us locations. So let me open this up. So this is just a picture of the engine. It's not actually giving us useful information for the oil change, unless we happen to be checking oil pressure. We close that and you'll find this quite often. They give you uh, extra images that you may not need. And like this one here was a 4.7, but they also show an eight liter. And keep in mind, we had the 5.9. So right side of the engine on a 5.9. A few more things. Okay, it's showing us the oil pressure sensor here, probably just because it's related to the engine oil. So it's giving us exploded views, some other locations. Um, stuff we're probably not gonna need, 
for an oil change, but let's click on procedures and see if it'll give us information on where we find the drain plug or the dipstick, common things like that. So here to change the oil tells us to put it on a level surface, whether that's in the air or on the ground, depending on your shop, hoist the vehicle, remove the oil cap. Okay. I see a problem already. Um, sometimes you have to read through this before doing the job because if you hoisted the vehicle already, you can't reach to remove the oil cap. So you're going to want to do that first. Then we'll lift it up, put a drain pan underneath the crankcase drain, remove the drain plug from the crankcase, allow the oil to drain. Now this procedure is going to be very similar to every other vehicle out there, but there might be a small detail in here that is vehicle specific. If the vehicle is a newer vehicle and it has a oil maintenance light, there will be additional information underneath this res reset tab. If there's nothing underneath here, then you don't have to worry about resetting the light or pro demand doesn't have the information you need. If you need to get back to the main screen where you started, we're going to click this blue box that says maintenance. We're going to go back to one search plus and we're back at that main screen. If you are done with this vehicle and you are ready to work on the next vehicle up here at the top, it says change vehicle. You're going to click that, go to vehicle selection, enter in your new details. So that pretty much wraps it up for the basic tutorial of pro demand. Now, if your instructor gives you an option to select your own vehicle, I would try to make it something that you own or someone in your family owns. Try not to pick an exotic vehicle or something that's very old or a brand new vehicle. Sometimes the current model year or vehicles are less than two years old, may not have all the details you need and vehicles older than 1985 may not have all the information as well. So it's best to pick something, you know, that's kind of a modern car but that's not something extremely exotic. I hope this video gave you a basic understanding of how to navigate pro demand, how to access quick information for doing basic maintenance tasks, looking at fluid capacities and even tire inflation and lug nut torque. If you have any questions or comments, put those down below. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe and click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.